Hello, welcome to 700 Club Interactive. We're glad you're with us today. Recent studies have shown that the average person has anywhere between 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts per day. That's quite a wide range. <laughs> uh, and among those thoughts, this is quite sad, a stunning 80% are negative thoughts. That's, that's right. But this isn't the first we've heard about the importance of monitoring our thought life. Encouragement to take thoughts captive is an as is as old as scripture itself. One of our viewers named Monique recently commented on YouTube asking about this. She said, what does the Bible mean that we have the mind of Christ? How does the mind of Christ work in my life? How do I switch off my own mind and only use the mind of Christ? So I wanted to share some scripture with you, Monique, in response to your question. So this is 1 Corinthians 2, uh, verses 11 through 12. So this is actually right before the scripture that Paul talks about, we have the mind of Christ, which I believe is 1 Corinthians 2, 16. So let's look at the scripture. 1 Corinthians 2, 11 through 12, no one can know a person's thoughts except that's that person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit, and we have received God's spirit, so we know the wonderful things God has freely given us. So again, this is basically just saying, hey, if you are a born-again Christian, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, and if the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, Christ is inside of you, right? Christ is inside of all of us, so we have his mind. So the more you activate the Holy Spirit in your life, the more you, um, you know, surrender to those Holy Spirit promptings, you're actually putting on the mind of Christ. And I don't know if we can fully turn off our own mind, you know, Great point. Great point. <laughs> but um, I think yeah, it's a daily challenge to put on the mind of Christ to take those thoughts captive. And I do just want to, you know, reiterate the fact that we can't do that in our own strength. We need the Holy Spirit. We can only do that with Him. What a great question, too. Here's someone who's really maturing in their faith. I mean, you don't need my analysis of your faith walk, but I'm saying that's a deep question. How yeah. do I obtain the mind of Christ? Mm -hmm. uh, great scripture. Yeah. I'm really glad you pointed that out. As I was considering this, I hadn't come to that one. I think part of this is seeing life, seeing circumstances and matters, and even people through the lens of Jesus. How does yeah. He see people? Mm -hmm. Um, forgiveness is a big one, yeah, right? Absolutely. I mean, if we're going to have the mind of Christ, it's forgiving other people is a big one. Here's yeah, another scripture yeah. for consideration. This is from Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 through 5. Here we go with Paul again. Look at this. Do nothing, nothing from self, selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility. Consider one another as more important than yourselves. You're right, Ashley, that will not come naturally. <laughs> Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. And here we go. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also yeah. in Christ Jesus. So here it is about lifting other people up mm -hmm. over ourselves. Instead of just our own self-interest, our dedication and our efforts are also to be lifting up other people. Yeah. And in the beginning of the show, Ashley mentioned taking our thoughts captive. Yeah taking our thoughts captive to Christ. So that's, we've talked on this show previously about yeah. not reacting emotionally to people, mm -hmm. but yeah. responding and it's exactly. a process. It's almost like a filter, you know, Lord, I wanna say this, I wanna do this, yeah. but I'm gonna filter it through the lens of Jesus. That's, that's somewhat of the mind of Christ too. Yeah, and having a repentive heart is also the mind yes. of Christ. You know, so even if you don't catch it before it comes out of your mouth, immediately, you know, you're still listening to his, to the mind of Christ. If, if the Holy yeah. Spirit inside of you was like, hey, you know, probably shouldn't have said that. You probably should, you know, ask for forgiveness. Obeying that is also, you yeah, know, listening to the Lord. because we're not going to be perfect. Exactly. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to yeah. sin. Um, and it's that repent of heart like you're talking about. Paul also says in Colossians, yeah. don't set your mind and heart on things of the earth, but on things mm -hmm. above. So exactly. again, it's looking at things through a kingdom principle about how does yeah. God want us to operate with other people. And, yeah. and this is a journey, it's tough. Absolutely, and I think the more the more we just spend time in the presence Absolutely. of God, the more we're able to understand His Spirit, right? The more I'm sure. in your presence, Andrew, the more I understand you, I how am, you yeah. work, you know. So it's the same as the Holy Spirit. It's, you know, so my encouragement for you, if, if you're wanting to know um, how to do it better, how to, how to listen to the Holy Spirit, just spend time with the Lord, Absolutely. worship, in your word, around like-minded believers, surrounding yourself with community is important. And um, I think, you know, 
you'll be on the right track yeah. for sure. Well, good question. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for sending that in. So if you would like to ask a question or give us a talk topic to talk about on this show like we just did, make sure you visit our social media pages. Look for our posts on the different platforms such as Facebook and Instagram at 700 Club Interactive. You can also visit our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash 700 Club Interactive for extended interviews and stories and topics like this. Andrew? Well, if you take a look at the Donnie Shell collection at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, you'll see a number of mementos from his storied career. There's a trophy he earned as an All-American in college, one of the first footballs he intercepted during his rookie year, and the well-worn Bible that he studied as a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And recently, sports reporter Tom Buring talked with Donnie about the role his faith played on and off the field. Donnie Shell flashed his medal as a playmaker for the famed Steel Curtain defense. It's been a long journey, but a good one. I arrived in Pittsburgh in 1974 as an undrafted free agent, and now I'm in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Only God can do that. The four-time Super Bowl champ and three-time first-team All-Pro spent his entire 14-year career as a Pittsburgh Steeler, steered there on the advice of his college coach. I'm going to sign with the Denver Broncos as an undrafted rookie, and I went and talked to Coach Willie Jeffries. He said, very emphatically, you need to go to Pittsburgh. I said, well, why, Coach? Well, that's your motive. They love people who are committed, self-motivated. That's your M.O. You need to sign with Pittsburgh. As a mentor, advisor, and leader, the distinguished strong safety earned his master's in counseling as faith transformed his life. So a three-decade wait to reach the Hall of Fame. Releasing something look different to you? Yeah, the longer you wait, the longer you think you're not going to get in. But it caused me to reflect on my athletic life. I said, Lord, I had a good career. I thank you. What he did by that way, he changed my attitude. Let your will be done. And then when I let it go and let God do his work in my life, he gave me some things that I've been praying for all those years. How do you come to terms with that? Spending time for the Lord and in his word, reading and meditating on his word, and walking in obedience to him and as you putting things inside of you and uh, the Holy Spirit is processing it and it calls you to grow and, and think God thoughts. A specialty in laying a person out on the field. <laughs> Did you ever play with a temperament? Look at this face. You have to think <laughs> That's the that kid <laughs> Did you have an on off switch? <laughs> no, um, it's just like a horse a wild stallion, and yet a good trainer will get that horse and domesticate him and make it and train him. They don't come any tougher than strong safety, Donnie Shell, number 31. He didn't take his aggressiveness away. He didn't take his strength away. He didn't take none of his power away from that horse. He just under control of that person who trained him. So that was me. I was under control of the Holy Spirit, using my gifts to the maximum. Mel Blunt mentored you a teammate. You came alongside a young Tony Dungy, mentored him. How does that speak to you about the power of investing in people where their reach goes far beyond you may even be able to reach? I, I think it speaks volumes. That's what happened to me in my life. Somebody saw something in me that I didn't see. Like my high school coach, Coach Lefty Johnson, he said, you can be whatever you want to be. So when we see something in people where they're young or old, we need to encourage them to be all God created them to be. First, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for this award. Your work fosters relationships to heal and reconcile. For you, where does that transformation start? Oh, it has to start with you, yourself, inside. The scripture says, if, if you don't forgive those that trespass against you, then the Father will not forgive you. So it starts with you. I guess that's where my counseling degree comes in. And you listen to the other person intently, compassionately about their concerns. As a counselor, Donnie, do you gravitate to the description of him as wonderful counselor? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's that's my source. That's my strength for wisdom and guidance and direction. And I pray every day that I may meet someone that I may share Jesus Christ with or be of encouragement to someone today. A man prayed that prayer for me, and that's the way I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. What's most important to you in shaping a legacy while you still have the opportunity to define it? Be a servant leader. 
one who is motivated by love and humility, but demonstrated by example. We change as we grow in Christ. We change on the inside out. So people will see less of us and more of Jesus Christ. That's the legacy that I like to leave. Donnie Shell, what a man of great wisdom, just the kind of guy you want to hear more and more from. Here, here he is, one of the toughest men to put on a uniform in the NFL, certainly for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You saw him dropping one of the toughest running backs, Earl Campbell, in some of those clips from the Oilers. And here's a guy, really what he was talking about was meekness, that is strength under control. He is a tough, strong, competitive man, yet we hear about him praying, reading the Word, surrendering to the Holy Spirit, he is showing us what a Christ-following man is. So, Donnie, thank you for your great testimony. Ashley, he was some kind of player. Wow, I loved what he said. You know, he was under the control of the Holy Spirit, and it was the Holy Spirit. The Christ we were talking yeah, about Yeah, exactly, yeah. And he was, you know, influenced by the Holy Spirit. He said the Holy Spirit was using his gifts and talents. And then I also loved what he said towards the end, too, you know, leaving a legacy of being a servant leader operating in humility. So that's really what a true leader does is yeah. serve others, not serve themselves, but serve others. So such a good story. Yeah. I love that. Great guy. Doctors had given up all hope for Valerie Patters. She was on life support with no brain activity. But Valerie's sister refused to believe the doctor's report. And instead, she relied on a scripture for her sister's healing. And she also believed that the impossible was possible against all odds. In the dream, I was driving in my car and I came upon this accident scene that had to do with semi-trucks. And so when I started waking up out of the dream, I was like, I could feel it was a dream from the Lord and I felt burdened. And so I began to pray right away. March of 2000, two months after Cheryl Schulke's dramatic dream, her sister Valerie Paters was in a freeway pileup near her home in Flagstaff, Arizona. Valerie's car was crushed under the weight of a semi-truck, and it took first responders several hours to extract her from the vehicle. A mutual friend was on the scene and got word to Cheryl that Valerie was unconscious and not expected to survive. We hung up the phone, and the minute we hung up, I started praying. I said, God, how do you want me to pray for Valerie? And he said, pray that she will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Those words from Psalm 118, verse 17, gave Cheryl hope as she prayed for her sister's life. It stirred my faith to believe that the impossible was possible already before I even saw her. So when I did see her, I was not moved by what I saw in the hospital because I didn't even recognize her. But what moved me was the Word of God. A prayer chain quickly started as word spread through their church community. But when Cheryl got to the hospital, doctors gave her a grim report. They pretty much told us she had, you know, we had no hope that she was probably not going to make it. There was no brain activity. Um, they kept her on life support to harvest her organs. Cheryl would not give up. She gathered friends and continued praying for Valerie to wake from her coma. I want those that I have already prayed with or one in spirit that will believe God's word and we're gonna to go to war and we're gonna pray over Valerie. And so we took a time one day, I think it was on a Wednesday, we went into the chapel and we took over the chapel and the chapel became like a war room. We went in there and we just began to speak life over her. We prayed over her. Their prayers continued for days, but there were no visible signs of improvement. Meanwhile, Valerie was experiencing a very different reality in heaven. When I stepped into heaven, I mean, I, I hit the light and I was literally blinded by the light. I'm blinded still today of the light of his presence. I stood up, I turned around and there was Jesus. And I don't know if I, I ran to him or he came to me. I mean, all of a sudden we were there. He just smiled at me, and I felt all this emotion that he had for me. I finally felt like I, I was home. It was like I stepped into, finally, I belonged. This is where I belonged. This, I was home. Valerie had been a Christian for most of her life, 
but says she never believed that God really loved her. In my heart of hearts, I did not believe that I was worthy of his love because I always felt like I was never going to measure up to what I thought the Lord wanted from me. So when I felt his emotion, I felt how he felt about me and the things that I, I thought about myself, like my flaws or my, my issues, he never even noticed. He just wants me. It wasn't anything that I, I did for him. It wasn't my performance, nothing. It was, it was just me. I wasn't just loved by him, but he was in love with me. And I was his, I, that was it. I was done for. <laughs> and I, I thought, ah. but then realizing this is how he feels about his creation. Those that he's created, whether they know him yet or not, this is how he feels. Valerie says she felt like she was there for a thousand years and experienced life and love like she never had on earth. Then Jesus told her she had to go back with a message. He said, you can stay if you want to. And I said, well, if I can stay, I'm staying with you. I'm going to stay with you. And he said, but your purpose isn't done. And he said, I want you to tell them, tell the people who I am who I really am. Because I thought he was, you know, religious. I thought he was mean. I thought he was, um, I didn't think he was, you know, human. And he, he's human. He'll always be human, but he's God. I didn't want to leave him. I hated leaving, but I had to come back. And the next thing I knew, I was making like my descent back to the earth. At the hospital days after the accident, the medical team began reacting to new signs of life. And the doctor's checking, he's flashing the light in her eyes and, and he, he looks at me and he said, get ready, I think your sister's coming back. I see some brain activity. I, I just began to rejoice, rejoice. And I said, thank you, Lord. Valerie soon woke up and experienced a miraculous recovery. Two and a half months after the accident, she walked out of the hospital, healed both physically and spiritually. I, I know who I really am. And so when I had to deal with, you know, coming back with the suffering, um, my, my time with the Lord is what carried me through my recovery. While Valerie was in heaven, getting a revelation of the love of Jesus. I was on earth getting a revelation of the love of Jesus. There's a love that I've been experiencing, a Jesus' love that I'd never experienced before as a Christian. Cheryl and Valerie look back on their experience amazed and thankful for the answered prayers and love they each received in their time of need. I was worth the price they paid. That blew me away. We are worth the price that he paid for us. It was the power of prayer to see God bring forth a miracle. Believe the word of the Lord, stand on his word, get a scripture and stand on that word and, and continue to pray no matter how bad it looks. Even when the doctors give you the bad report, believe in the report of the Lord, which is a good report and stand in faith believing for your miracle. And I know God will give them a miracle. Wow, I don't know about you, but that story has just blown my mind. Jesus is so good. He loves his creation. Who is his creation? That's you and me. We were created in the image of God, our heavenly father, our Abba, Father, Jesus looks at you the same way he looked at Valerie. When Valerie was in heaven and in the presence of Jesus, she said that she knew he was in love with her, not just loved her, in love with her, looked at her as, as she is the apple of his eye. Wow, what a revelation. And I pray 
that that same revelation that Valerie had with Jesus, literally with Jesus in heaven, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you are experiencing that same revelation, or even right now. I pray that the Holy Spirit is touching you right now with the love of God. It is the love of God that sets us free. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. It is, it is because of God's love for you and for me that he died on the cross. And scripture tells us that it is the stripes that he bore on his back from the abuse, from the murder. It is his stripes that we are healed. That is the, the report of the Lord. And just like Valerie's sister said, believe in the report of the Lord. Don't believe in what the doctors are telling you, what even the outside world is telling you about what you should think about your condition or about your situation, whatever it looks like. Friend, believe the report of the Lord, which is I am a child of God. I am loved by the creator of this world so much so that he died for me. And because of his death and because of his resurrection, I can grab my healing right now. I can believe and I can have faith and hope that I will live and not die. Believe that today, friend. Believe it and receive it for yourself today. Andrew and I are gonna pray for you, but before we do, we have some more amazing miracle stories that we wanna encourage you with. This is a viewer on YouTube. This person said, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and the doctors told me I would need a lumpectomy and radiation treatment. I stood in faith and agreement with my family and church and believed that I was healed, just like Valerie believed for her sister. When I went back a few weeks later to another scan, there was no cancer. It's been a year and I am still cancer free. Amen. Here's another review on Instagram said, I struggled for years with anxiety and depression. I sought treatment with a therapist and with medication, but I still couldn't find relief. One night I was praying, I heard the Lord say, let me heal you. Mm. I released it all to the Lord and in that moment had complete peace. I no longer struggle with anxiety or depression. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, yeah. Here's some amazing, encouraging praise reports. We're gonna pray with you now. We just have a couple of minutes left. Mm -hmm. So whatever your need is, please, let's bring it before the throne of God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Father God, you know our heart cry, but you heal our wounds, said the psalmist in 147. You heal our wounds and hear the cry of our, our heart. There is, I just see this so clearly. There is a, a young woman who's suffering an eating disorder mm -hmm. and you know the Lord. You constantly check the mirror. You constantly check the mirror. The Holy Spirit desires to have you stop looking in the mirror and look in the word of God, as Ashley was saying, to understand who you are, who God created you to be and how much he loves you. Jesus loves you intimately. And you're being healed of that condition today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe somebody's watching. You have actually, you just heard Andrew said that he heals our wounds. You, li you ha literally have a wound. Uh, it's on your left arm, on your forearm, like right above your wrist, below your elbow. And I believe the Lord is healing that for you right now, miraculously. You're just, you feel heat. It is the presence of God. He's healing that for you right now. Just receive this right now in Jesus' name. Procla proclaim the goodness of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Someone else heard that report about uh, someone being healed of anxiety and depression and says, I want that. I need that. Their heart is breaking. And uh, just raise your hands now before the Lord and surrender. He desires to heal you and give you hope. He desires an intimate relationship with you. And Father, we just come against bondage to anxiety or depression. That is a burden the enemy puts on us. And we just rebuke it today. No weapon formed against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Please call us if you need more prayer, 800-700-7000, someone who would love to pray with you. I wanna leave you with these words from Philippians chapter four, verse seven, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, amen to that. Well, tomorrow, a heavenly vision with an unusual visitor in his prison cell. One man went from gang member to a pop star while behind bars, don't miss it. 
everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.